Welcome to Stuff You Missed in History Class, a production of iHeartRadio. Happy Friday! I'm Tracy V. Wilson. And I'm Holly Fry. Uh, and this week we had our year in unearthed in 2020, coming out the second week of 2021. So much stuff! So much stuff. We uh, We needed a little break, so we took a little break. Um, and it's not totally uncommon for me to, like, start work on an episode and then, say, take a vacation or have a couple days out or whatever and come back to it later on. But this was, I think, the lengthiest break of such, uh, <laughs> <laughs> such circumstances that I have had. And it made it kind of weird because when I actually got back to my desk and started going back through stuff, I was like, I don't remember so much of this at all. Not what I expected. Plus, uh, then having three weeks of news to go through to see if anything else happened, which there were definitely interesting things that happened. Yes, that whole Pompeian thing. The Pompeii thing, people were, like, tweeting at us about... <laughs> Listen, I'm excited about a food stall, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, ki- it made me miss various travels where I have you know, gone to food trucks or kooky restaurants or anything like that. Yeah. I am um, I am definitely missing travels, which I know is like the most privileged place to sit. To be like, oh, I <laughs> wish I could travel again. There are bigger issues that people are grappling with, I know. Um <laughs> but I really do love the idea. My my whole thing, we're still it's been postponed a couple times. We'll see when it happens. Uh, but we are still planning to do a history stuff you missed in history class trip to Italy uh when the pandemic is over and it's safe. And yeah. I I keep being like, I gotta make a side trip to Pompeii. I wanted to do it already, but now I'm like, I gotta see this food stand if I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, this this all folds into the question of um, when that trip might ever happen. Uh, I I feel like when I was looking at stuff, like a lot of that stuff is currently closed because of the pandemic. Um, it continues to be interesting to me which things uh, stay uh, stay closed and which things are uh, open and how places are trying to mitigate risk. Um, the the next thing that we are going to record. Uh, in this recording session, involves a park. And when I was just looking at a map of it, um, I was also seeing the information about which parts of the park are closed. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, that's a whole thing. I've been spending a lot of my time um, in very expansive parks uh, that are still open to the public because being outdoors is generally a little less risky. Um, but the uh, the Massachusetts, I can't remember which department it is that's in charge of all of that, tweets out, like, the parking lot at this place is closed for the next three hours because the park is at its, like, maximum safe capacity, which is just the whole thing. None of that's related to Unearth, though. <laughs> it's just related to how we're still having a pandemic. Right. We're still trying to figure out when we can do history things and visit places that come up and unearthed. Yeah. And many of them, like you said, are closed, so it's related-ish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plus a tiny sneak peek of something that's coming next week on the show. Yeah. I really, really loved the the section that you included here about bias and assumption when analyzing bodies. Yeah. Or remains, I should say. Because it is one of those things that people... Uh, often think about certain things that have been relayed as fact, as settled history, but we can't always do that because you have to remember that specific lenses were being applied. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) And we have to, you know, kind of backwards engineer, like, did that lens end up possibly misidentifying something? Yeah. Well, and we also, we have um, cultures from more recent history than that section was about that do generally, roughly speaking, have, like, a gender dichotomy where, as a general rule, it is more the men's responsibility to hunt and more the women's responsibility to gather. But when you go farther and farther back in in prehistory and, like, there's no 
there's not a living culture to talk to people about. We don't really have any kind of written records. Um, There becomes a point where it's like, we're just sort of assuming that the way it works now is also the way that it worked then, which is not necessarily true. Uh, and is one of the really interesting things that I, uh, that they talked about on the the podcast that I mentioned in that, which is the the men series from the podcast Seen on Radio, um, because they talked to anthropologists and other experts uh, about the evolution of that whole thing and how like how and when the idea evolved that there that these jobs were separated by gender. There was also one point, like, we had had a similar conversation on the show at one point that we got some, you know, kind of frustrated emails from people about. And then shortly thereafter, there was an archaeologist who sort of tweeted out this series of, like, these are the things we really have to think about when we're doing this kind of work. And I was like, well, I feel incredibly (laughs) vindicated because these are the same points that I was trying to make. Uh, I am not an archaeologist, so I'm glad to, like, continue to hear people having these conversations and, uh, you know, trying to make it clear that there's stuff that, like, your upbringing and your culture and your perspective affects all of these things, regardless of, you know, how much you want to try to believe that there's an impartiality to it. Right. I also, my thing, too, is that, and I tend to do it as well, right, because we're trying to parse difficult subject matter just in terms of, like, understanding how other things worked, And sometimes the strokes get so broad that we forget that almost every, I mean, I can't think of a single example of a society or a culture that we know of that doesn't have outliers. Right, right. Right, there's always people, even if you say, well, most women in this culture do this, there's always an exception. Yeah. And most men in this culture do this, but there's always some exception. And so noting as much as we study history that there seems to be an exception everywhere to something uh I, I start to think about like how much of this is exceptions and just like a more of a a proportion analysis that we haven't really taken into account because we're oversimplifying when we are like no men in this culture did well maybe maybe even 60%, but there could have been others, so. Yeah, well, and the grave goods conversation is so, like, if we just think about people living today, like, as a totally made-up example, a a person might say, like, I really want to be buried with my grandmother's ring because I loved my grandmother so much, and it's gonna, like, it makes me feel comforted to think that I will have her with me when I go to my final rest. Uh, And then, you know, 300 years later, somebody digs up that grave and says, this ring must have been a high mark of status. It seems really valuable. (laughs) Um, You know, it's like, there's there's a, we're learning things all the time and and reevaluating how we've drawn conclusions all the time. And that's like an important and necessary part of the study of history. And archaeology and anthropology and everything. Everything. All fields. All fields evolving all the time. They don't just stop. I also had a a funny random thought while we were recording that I didn't mention because it would have taken us woefully off track about the the beads that were so fine that they had to be sifted with mosquito net. Yeah. And how they were found up near what would have been that, that person's shoulder. And in my head, because I am a crafty person who has done a lot of beating in my time. I I imagined this person that was working with teeny tiny beads and like they dropped their thing and they were they just died of anger at the moment. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh dang it. Beads everywhere. Yep. We've all been beads there. Beads all over. We've all been there. Beads all over seems like a good stopping point. <laughs> <laughs> Death by bead frustration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. It somehow it reminded me of I was making myself some hot cocoa while I was on a break. And it's like a, a particular hot cocoa that I really like that it is, is a mix. Um, and I don't remember what I did, but I did something that just like flung a tablespoon of the powder all over. And the the sound I made was so dismayed that from the other room I heard, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway... 
Welcome to the new year of recording in the year 2021. I know this is now a couple of year or a couple of year, a couple of weeks into the new year as this episode comes out, but we're recording it literally right after. So I hope uh, everyone who had has some kind of a break over the holiday time had as good of a break as possible. Uh, yeah. If you want to write to us, we're at History Podcast at iHeartRadio.com. And you can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts and the iHeartRadio app and anywhere else to get your podcasts. Stuff You Missed in History Class is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.